Call to order the August 1st Board of Commissioner meeting. Please silence all your cell phones, pagers, and other electronic communication devices. Next, we'll have a moment of silence and the Pledge of Allegiance led by our Fire Administrator, Jerome Harvey. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the United States, States of America and, and to, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Next, we'll have a review and approval of the agenda. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. By DeSanto, second by Mr. Commissioner LaCroix. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Next, we'll have Ms. Holly Hennies. Good morning, Commissioners. For public notice, the Board of Commissioners uses a consent agenda to act on non-controversial and routine items. The consent agenda is acted upon by one motion and vote of the Board. Items may be removed from the consent agenda and placed on the regular agenda at the request of a Board member or a citizen. Today's consent agenda contains the following items. Approval of the minutes from the regular meeting of July 11th, 2017. Approval of the minutes from the regular meeting of July 18th, 2017. Number seven is to acknowledge disinternment permit number 1169256. Number eight is to acknowledge the annexation of property as described by the auditor to the Naughty Pines Road District, effective for tax year 2017 and after. Number nine is to acknowledge the annexation of property as described by the auditor to the Sunset Ranch Road District, effective for tax year 2017 and after. Number 10 is to acknowledge the order of organization and incorporation for the Upper Horse Creek Road District, effective for tax year 2017 and after. Number 11 is to schedule a public hearing at 9.15 a.m. on Tuesday, August 15th, 2017, to supplement the general fund operating transfer budget in the amount of $2,304.08 from the county general fund unassigned reserves to the health care trust fund to properly account for the 2016 interest earnings and further to establish the interest distribution for county funds, must be a policy, as follows. Healthcare trust fund and E911 fund will retain their respective interest earnings each year in order to comply with proper financial reporting requirements. All other interest for county funds will remain in the general fund, and this is as submitted by the auditor. And finally, number 12 is to approve the spending policy for non-general government funds as follows. Road and Bridge will spend proceeds from current year revenue from sales of fixed assets first. And secondly, restricted fund balance. All other non-general government funds will spend restricted fund balance first, as submitted by the auditor. Oh, and one more. Number 13, to declare one Pepper Fog CS tear smoke generator and one Midland 13-301 power megaphone as presented as surplus for the purpose of destruction. Thank you, Ms. Holly. Is there anyone from the public that like to speak on any items five through 13? Is there any commissioners that like to pull any items five through 13? If not, do we have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Moved by DeSanto and second by LaCroix. <coughs> All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Next, we're at the regular agenda items, <coughs> 14 through 18. First is the County Cares Veterans Service Office. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Commissioners. All right. So we're just going to tell you a little bit about what our office does here. So my name is Jamie Guffey. I'm with the Pennington County Veterans Service Office. And your name, sir? I'm Alex Purcell, Veteran Service Officer. Alex Purcell. Thank you, Alex. Well, Pennington County is home to over 12,500 veterans and their dependents. Here's a list of a few services that we provide. Of course, this doesn't include everything. Uh, we help veterans apply for compensation claims, death and burial benefits. Um, we help surviving spouses and dependents, uh, records requests, state benefits, community referrals. 
Um, those are just a few things. We also get involved in a lot of outreach. Um, Ellsworth Air Force Base, we have a large presence with, with them, and then uh, different uh, various activities and, and outreach programs here in, locally in Pennington County. Thank here you. locally in Pennington County. Excuse Thank me. you, dear. Okay, this is just a breakdown of the different types of claims that we, we help assist veterans with. The majority of the claims are compensation, pension, and DIC claims. Uh, those are all monetary generating claims for veterans and survivors of, of veterans. Total claims by month. Um, as This is as of May of 2017. Uh, Currently, 1,166 claims to date. Uh, we are on track to, to exceed the, the previous year claim numbers. So as you can see, we have a lot of veterans that come through our office every, every month. Nice. For 2017, uh, we're averaging between 50 and, and 60 compensation, pension, and claims monthly um, and as of May of 2017 those claims for 2017 have generated $90,717 and that will only continue to grow as those claims continue to come in. And this is just a snapshot. This, this shows what our office has done um, as far as claim-wise and the money that we've generated due to the four veterans um, assisting them in getting their benefits. So in 2016, over $2 million has been generated uh, for these veterans by claims that we have submitted. And this, this will continue to grow as there's still outstanding claims from 2016. And as of uh, in May, oh, close to $700,000 has been generated. Oh. All right, good morning. I'm Alex Purcell, as previously mentioned. I'll just run through a few things about the Pennington County Veterans Protocol Court. Uh, just a little history, as the informal planning did begin back in 2012-ish, um, we officially started March of 2016, so we are over our uh, one-year anniversary date on that. There's four 90-day phases. Different aspects are involved with each phase for the veteran participants. Uh, of course, treatment options are the, the, the main aspect of Veterans Court as it's a treatment court. Um, both VA and community-based options, depending on whether the veteran can get, um, get into the Veterans Health Care Administration or not. Sometimes they're barred from that benefit. Um, the, the Veterans Court really um, functions on accountability and intensive case management. So these, these individuals are held accountable for their actions and their, their case managed pretty heavily. Uh, court proceedings, the veteran is in front of the judge in the court the first and third Thursday of each month. Um, we're on the third floor of the courthouse. If you ever wanna come, that's the time frame for it. We currently have seven participants. We actively review cases every week for for new eligible participants, of course, that's filtered through the state's attorney's office, and an offer would be made by that attorney for the, the potential participant. Um, and then another offer would come from the state as far as being eligible for Veterans Court or not. Uh, August, coming up, August 16th through the 18th, the uh, accrediting body for um, na nationwide Vets Courts, Justice for Vets, um, they're coming to Rapid City to provide us with formalized training and they're going to review our policy and uh, how we administer Vets Court in comparison to the national standard and help us with any changes that might need to be implemented. And then following that month on September 7th, we're doing what's called a mentor court site visit where you go and visit a, a, an actual Vets Court that's been up and running for a while. And uh, that one will be in Colorado Springs where our whole team is gonna go down and we'll, we'll review their court and see how their process works and everything. Um, some interesting <coughs> aspects of the court. Uh, as of June 22nd, and this number has increased because we have had increased days of sobriety since then, but among those seven participants, we have 947 days of sobriety. 
um, and that's tested sobriety through SCRAM 24-7 probation. So that's, that's a really large number for seven people that would normally not have that. Uh, current participants suspended penitentiary sentences looking at around 33 years. That doesn't include following their sentence of, of prison or incarceration here in the county. So that would be 33 years without probation or parole time. And the, as you can see, the, the veterans court team is very diverse. Um, you know, we have law enforcement involved, probation, the judge, defense, um, a lot of different roles are at play here, so we can really facilitate this process. Here's a picture of the Veterans Court team, and then another aspect of the Veterans Court is the, the, the mentor program, which assigns the veteran participant a mentor, somebody who's not high risk, that they can become involved with. Um, so that, that's just what the team looks like and what the mentors there below look like. We have our first graduation on August 3rd at 5.30 here in the administration building at the EOC room. So if you can attend, that'll be a, it'll be a special time. Good morning, I'm Barry Tice, the director of Pennington County Health and Human Services in the Veterans Service Office. And a big piece I wanted to highlight with the Veterans Protocol Court is this has been done by volunteers. Uh, there has been no money allocated from the state to Veterans Court at this time. And so I want to make sure um, that you're aware that folks have uh, volunteered for a few years to make this a successful court. And so with the Bureau of Justice coming in the next couple of weeks to provide this training, that really formalizes uh, the, the court. But for over the past year, um, <coughs> folks have been volunteering their time every other week to come and um, see this through. And um, as you're aware, Pennington County Health and Human Services uh, is instrumental in creating some different programs where we see a need. And of course, back in the end of 2011 and 2012, uh, we had a veteran service officer who had saw an increasing rate in the number of veterans incarcerated at our county jail and said, there's gotta be something we can do. And with our uh, proactiveness in reentry and rebound and working with individuals inside our jail, that, that was a good fit. And, and here we are today with uh, a specialty court for veterans. And although we're considered the second in the state, I would say that our friends out east, we have uh, more participants and, is, and given our geographical location with the Ellsworth Air Force Base and two VA facilities. This is a huge piece in our community. So I just want to make sure we let the public know. Thank you. Any questions? Madam Board? Chair, uh, I've got a scenario for you. I'm working with a veteran that's been, uh, he's been denied benefits from uh, an accident he had back in 1964 because the Navy had lost records. And uh, he's finally found the records but he's still having a difficult time getting the benefits that he should have gotten for hospital benefits. And are you the people he should be talking to? Yes. Yep, absolutely. Okay, okay, good. Well, I'll send him your direction. Okay, sure. Look right. <clears throat> well, first of all, I wanna thank you guys for the work that you're doing. You know, when I first got on the commission, I toured in the state's attorney's office and, and this program was starting out. And I think it's good to be ahead of the game doing preventative and, and so forth, working with a lot of what we got going on. Um, one of the questions <clears throat> that I have is, I'm, I'm like Mark, I, we had a case that came to us where a, a person was incarcerated in it and accumulated a lot of medical bills while being incarcerated as a vet. And I know he's still working on that, but I mean, is there, Somehow, if, if to get those benefits to the person while they're incarcerated, you know, I don't know that this is something that's come forward in the last six months. I mean, it, it's re it's really difficult. I've looked up the exact law in the 38 USC and the CFR, and I don't have it memorized anymore. I did at the time that that gentleman was going through this process, though, and um, the VA essentially denies and disenrolls veterans from the VA healthcare system upon incarceration. So 
it makes it really hard for okay. there is certain programs out there where you know medication and stuff can be paid for which i know that he's referred to in different states and everything but it's it's really a hard process to configure with the va and i th don't think that they do anything with that here locally it would be more of like a uh you know, more of like a work release program or yeah. you know like they the work centers and stuff like that but as far as incarceration is concerned i could get you the exact regulation on that as well no i i appreciate your comment i just kind of, i think we kind of needed to hear that because we get a lot of phone calls and and getting that referral you know i know a lot of services once you're incarcerated and for IHS and so forth, so unless you can do the transports. My predecessor, Karen Romy, had spent a lot of time working on that piece uh, with the federal government and the changes with that because innocent until proven guilty, um, there's a little bit of a, a lag in there yeah. as individuals wait to be sentenced. So sure. in a veteran's case, then they lose their benefits when uh, sentencing hasn't occurred. So. I think it's a, uh, you know, it's a, a long, long road with that, but it's good that it continues to come to the top, to the sure. surface, because, of course, that's a major problem. And just one thing to add is the other aspect of that law is when the VA cuts benefits as well as in another, in another time is when the person is under the care of somebody that has a duty to care, which in his case, the... Pennington County Jail is the, has a duty to care for that individual, then they resend the benefits as well at that time. Yes, sir. I was kind of looking out for our, our jail and, and, and for the veterans at the same time. So I was, that's one of my questions. I appreciate your guys' input. Thank you. Commissioner Busker. Yeah, I have a hypothetical question. There's this veteran and his wife thinks that he needs hearing aids. I don't think I do. <laughs> I mean, he, he doesn't think he does. Uh, so I've heard a, a lot about veterans getting hearing aids, and is there an income eligibility requirement, and uh, are you the right people to come and see about it? We are the right people to come see about that, and, and yes, there are income uh, restrictions. Uh, if you have a service-connected disability, then then no, that does not apply. But to get into the VA, unless you have a service-connected disability, there, and there is income guidelines that we would go over with you. Okay. Well, I could have an income re or service-related one, I guess. Mm -hmm. and that's Let me think about would... it. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, that's that something... answers it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Commissioner Verby? Has your wife been talking to my wife? I get accused of that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Um, I went to the veterans court. Actually, I went through the process behind the scenes just to see what they do and, and how the process works and then went to veterans court. So uh, that was kind of more at the beginning of it and they were working on some things and now they're getting more training as well. So um, it's a good process. It's helping the people and the veterans that have served our country in a way that uh, I think is very personal. So I appreciate all you guys' work that you do on, on uh, the people uh, that have fought for our country um, and uh, makes a huge difference. They need caring people that want to make a difference and, and help them. And Alex, I hear lots of good things about you as well. And uh, Miss uh, Jamie, I have worked with before, so she's always nice. <laughs> thank so you. So thank you for all you do. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Next, we'll have the Central States Fair update. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the Commission. I'll uh, speak loud for Ron and, and uh, George here. So. <laughs> Great, Ron. Just wanted to give you a brief... The answer's uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even asking for anything. <laughs> Just want to give you a quick and brief update on the uh, Central States Fair coming up August 18th through the 27th, uh, and also extend a special invitation to have you attend. Uh, our kickoff is on Friday the 18th at 3 o'clock. We'll do a ribbon cutting and kind of an introduction and rollout for the entire fair. It's an exciting year for us. We've got a few new events 
Uh, ticket sales have been gangbuster, uh, just going great. Had one of the largest ticket sale days on record uh, yesterday for the Central States Fair for events this year. So we're very excited about that. Nice. Good. We're hosting a special Indigenous People celebration on Saturday the 19th. And uh, we're working with a couple <laughs> of local uh, persons that are providing us with a uh, storytelling, uh, some teepees set up. We'll do some dance, a fashion show, Native American fashion show. We'll do some drum playing. Uh, three different sets of musicians will come in and play. And then we're doing a Pow Wow 101 class where you can come in and learn about what the songs mean and what the dance means. And, and really, it's, it's, it's a chance for urbanites to come back out and learn a little bit more about the Native culture uh, so prevalent in our area. So we're very excited about that. It's going to prove to be a very cool addition to the Central States Fair. Wow. Of course, we've got uh, Grandstand Lineup Supercross Racing, the Johnson Machine Demolition Derby, uh, Black Hills Energy's uh, Concert Series, and then a range, or excuse me, a ranch rodeo and three nights of range days rodeo. Uh, during our range days rodeo, Thursday, August 24th, we'll do a military appreciation where all members of the military and their families that have served or are serving will be allowed free admission into the grandstands for the rodeo and our opportunity to recognize some of the service people at that event. And then on Saturday, the 26th, we're going to do a first responders day at the fair at the Range Days Rodeo as well. So we'll take all first responders. Uh, we've met both with uh, some of Kevin's crew and with Jerome. And so we'll have uh, Pennington County firefighters, uh, Rapid City Police Department, Pennington County Sheriff's Department, and some of the EMTs that will be represented and recognized at that event as well. Again, free admission for all. Uh, first responders and their families for that night at the rodeo should prove to be a very uh, good event. Um, with that, I would again like to extend an invitation uh, to you. I'll have a full schedule for you in your boxes so that uh, you can make sure you pick a few spots to come out and enjoy the fair. Come take a look at your fairgrounds. Take a look at the event that we host on your behalf. We would love to have you there. You missed my favorite part, Ron. The fruit pie showdown. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm and I thought you were going to say pig wrestling. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, Commissioner LaCroix. Ron, I, I want to thank you. No, Saturday, I'm looking at the Saturday schedule. You're saying the, the Native American drums and the culture stuff's on Saturday? First Saturday, correct. First Saturday. 19. I just wanted to make a comment that uh, I've had some people who actually remember that being part of the fairground fair years and years ago. And so I think it's good that that's coming back because they brought it up to me, I think, two or three years in a row. So Wonderful. But, you know, Don Monlo served on our board for a, a short period of time, and he was trying to help us get back on track with that. And then, of course, his career went a whole other direction. So we're, we're excited about doing it, and, and we're doing it mostly in the Soule building, you know. Okay. Um, We've had such a growth in our livestock activities that they outgrew the Orange Barn. So we're actually moving some of the livestock activities into the Soule building. We know it'll be much more like the stock show that way. We'll have vendors all throughout the building, and then we'll have uh, a livestock ring, which will be utilized double duty, all kinds of programming all week long, including the uh, Native Fashion Show in a sale ring. <laughs> so it's a, a little bit unique, but it will be a very nice event. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And the first responders are what day? Uh, Saturday the 26th. That's what I thought. Thank you, Ron. All right, thank you. Hope to see you there. Thanks, Thanks Ron. Ron. You bet. Take care. 16 is items from the Otter General Fund Budget Supplement, SP 17-008. Um, yes, Julie. Julie Pearson, Pennington County Auditor. This is the time for the public hearing for a general fund supplement to the John T. Vukurovich budget in the amount of 35000 from current year non-budgeted revenues. Of course, this is a grant that we don't include into the budget until it's actually uh, funded. So that's why it's a non-budgeted revenue. Just need motion to approve. Approve for approval. Second. Moved by LaCroix, second by DeSanto. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thanks. Have a good day. Number 17, item from the highway department. Number A, 17A would be authorization to purchase office furniture <coughs> for new highway office. Excuse me. Tom Wilsey, highway department. Um, 17A is uh, author, as you said, authorization to purchase furniture. Uh, furniture currently used at the highway department has primarily been obtained from federal surplus and other county departments that have given away their used desks, 
chairs and tables when they remodel. All the desks, chairs, tables have been reused for many years in our department. And some of the desks and file, file cabinets are, have non-working drawers and locks. Filing cabinets we have in the basement stood in water much of the time and are rusting out at the bottom. Some of those filing cabinets are not going to make it through the move. I've included photographs for you from several of these items. We were advised to use the state bids for buying more furniture. We have dealt with Dakota Business Center to determine the cost and needs that we would have for the new furniture for the new highway offices and shop. We also made inquiries of other auction houses in the area, which included Martin Jurish Auctioneer, McPherson Auction and Realty, Quality Auction and Rapid, and Castile Auction of Sturgis. They could not provide us with any times when they will have similar materials that we could use, that we could buy. We also contacted Black Hills Corp with their new big building. We figured they might have some stuff that we could buy from them. They have informed us that their furniture, they are getting new furniture for their new office, but they basically ship all their used furniture to other corporate offices in other states. Um, final cost from Dakota Business Center for new office furniture is $94,070.99. Highway but Department did budget for new furniture for the offices and shop. I am requesting authorization for the Highway Department to proceed with the ordering, of, ordering and purchasing of office furniture from Dakota Business Center. And I entertain any questions, please. Thank you. Any questions from the board or a motion? One question. Commissioner LeCroy. Yes. So, Tom, Dakota Business... They did the evaluation of what, what was needed so you could come up with the, something to present to other vendors to see if they could bid it out. What they, they have the state bid, so we dealt with them. Okay. Um, they laid them all out, got us what would be efficient and ergonomic for our office staff. And, well, to be honest, I've dealt with other vendors and their prices right in that ballpark. Okay. Because though, you know, one of the things I will say is when I come down and toured the department, and, and, and our county government has done a good job of using government surplus going and buying our furniture and our stuff from there. But I think at this point, we're at that point where we need what we need. And the furniture we have now, I feel, won't work quite as well. What we can do with this is make it so that the workstations are much more efficient and more, like I said, more ergonomic. I, I tend to agree. Okay. I mean, I, I, just from touring the old stuff, I mean, your pictures, I, that's great that you you took some pictures and showed it, but I mean, if you guys haven't been down there for a while and kind of walked around and seen some of the conditions of the stuff, this, would, this is going to greatly improve the morale and the, and the atmosphere for a, a work environment. If you were to walk down in our basement, you'll notice that our engineers are working off of folding tables. They've been doing that for years because of the water down there. Any other questions from the board? Commissioner DeSanto? I'm, uh, I was at the meeting back in, I think it was probably November or October before I became a commissioner. And one of the concerns when we were talking about building the new shop, and I agreed that building a new shop was a, necess a necessity, I talked about this, about what are we going to do about office furniture and all that stuff. Is, it be, is that going to be included in the cost of what we've projected as for the building and the new? And I'm, I guess I'm confused as to why this wasn't even, this wasn't actually part of that budget to begin with. I can't answer completely for that. I just know that they said they would not include it and that we would have to cover it through the highway department. Out of our budget. Fair motion. And make the motion to <clears throat> proceed with the ordering of the office furniture from Dakota Business. Is there a second? Is there a second? I'll second it so we can talk about it. Okay. Second for discussion by Madam first Chair. by the Christ, second by Buskrude. 
Any discussion? Yeah, I do. Mr. You know, and I don't know what else to do, but man, we're, we're $194,000 in furniture just seems to me to be outrageous. But maybe that's what it is, and I and I have no facts to contradict it. I guess uh, when I looked at it, I thought, okay, yeah, we need new furniture. The stuff you got is crap. Uh, I have no problem with that. But geez, and then and I and then thirty-three thousand for a lift. Well, we need that. Now all of a sudden we're at one hundred and maybe one hundred and thirty thousand dollars. You know, this that, this works out. Huh? This works out basically to about six thousand per workstation. And see, that don't mean anything to me either. Well, I bought one. I bought a I want, workstation. I want three thousand dollars a workstation. I bought a workstation when I worked for Minnehaha County twelve years ago. No, that was fourteen years ago. I spent thirty-eight hundred for it. So the price has not gone up. I mean, it's gone up, yes, but it was a lot more. Uh, how do I want to put it? That was just for one small workstation, no extras. This has a few extras, I'll admit. We've got wall hang, places where we can hang things on the wall, but those things are needed too. So we're not damaging the new building. It's hard for me to I'm, I'm working with the same office furniture I've had for 26 years. <laughs> well, I can tell you, if you've been in my office... It wasn't sitting in water, I, I can tell you that. If you, if you were to come to my office, I don't know, if, I can't remember when you were there, but I've got some mauve and blue chairs in my office that people like you would sit in. That came from the commission office 11 years ago. That's what the commissioners used to sit on 11, 12 years ago. And desks that, and that's are, what we've been using. That's the kind of stuff we do. And, yep. See, I was, uh, Madam Chair, uh, I, I knew this was going to happen. The minute we start building buildings, and the more buildings we build, now everybody's got to have a new building. And of course, then you have to have new stuff to put in the buildings. Uh, it, the, the costs just increase and increase and increase. And I don't know who's going to be next, but pretty soon we'll have another. Oh yeah, across the street over here. That's going to cost us a fortune. Um, Tom, you did budget this furniture um, through the highway department, right? Because you knew at the point when we were getting the building that you had to do the furniture. Yes, I did. Okay. I did budget for furniture. Okay. There's been a motion and a second. Um, all in favor say whoop, aye. Whoop, whoop. I'm sorry. Madam Chair, I, uh, there was a fellow that used to be a county commissioner. He's now gone, Jim Kerstead, and he used the words insane and crazy and once in a while they said nuts and and all three words apply in this case it's just nuts 94,000 for new. this is taxpayer money this is taxpayer money we just we, we need the best for the for the employees that's just not just not the way it works obviously I'll be voting no thank you any other discussion all in favor say aye 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 all opposed? Aye. So we have three ayes and two no. Um, motion carries. George no, and Commissioner DeSanto were no. If you guys could speak a little bit more on your microphone so I can hear who says no. Okay. Um, George and DeSanto. Thank you. No. Thank you. B is authorization to purchase two <coughs> post lift off state bid. Excuse me. <coughs> post lift. Okay. During construction of the new highway shop, the lift that was being used needed to be removed to allow access to another to a work bays in the shop. When we removed it, we took this lift to the new Underwood shop and it was being used there as they didn't have any lifts. Uh, plans for the new shop included a two post lift which was to be supplied and installed by the county. This style of lift is much more versatile for use in the shop than the old one we had. I looked at state bids. Sturtle Coney is a qualified supplier. We have had a very good experience with, with this company. I contacted the supplier for this region and received a quote from him. The new shop will be wired and plumbed accordingly to accommodate the use of the SK220 lift system. 
These lifts will be used for oil changes, brake jobs, suspension work, etc. cetera, uh, for any vehicle up to 20,000 pound gross. Just for your information, our big tractor trailer, the tractor units are 23, 24,000. So this will handle most of our vehicles with the exception of large plow trucks and other large equipment. I have included the estimate from DNJ equipment and the information from the state website for the vehicle lifts. I'm requesting a motion to authorize the highway department to purchase from the state bids the Sturtle Coney SK220 hydraulic lifts <coughs> from DNJ equipment sales and service for 33,457.65 as per the state of South Dakota bids. Thank you, Tom. Any questions for a highway? <coughs> I, I have one, Madam Chairman. Commissioner <coughs> Busker, please. So we're going to spend thirty-three thousand dollars to change oil on what? A bunch of pickups. Pickups, small trucks, um, any any equipment that's under twenty thousand pounds. But you said that that's not truck. That's not our big heavy trucks, no, or loaders or anything like that. It would be up to some of our road sweepers. Are some of our smaller trucks? Yeah, frankly, I don't think that looks very safe. I wouldn't get underneath that. <laughs> <laughs> we have one already in the wall <coughs> shop that we use, similar to what I'm buying. This one's actually a little heavier duty than that one. Madam Chair. Mr. DeSanto. The larger trucks, trucks you uh, change in a pit, right? Do you have a pit out there? No. Um, larger trucks, we have uh, wheel lifts we can use to get them up, or we just slide under them. Creepers? Yeah. Okay. There's room to get under those. So, Madam Chair. Commissioner LeCroy. <clears throat> so, this is for two, so we're breaking it down to probably about 15000 per per lift? It's a full unit. They basically come, as, the two is a unit. Okay. They're mounted right to the floor in the shop. Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion for discussion to authorize this purchase. I mean, we need to do the maintenance or we're going to lose our vehicles. So. Second. Oh, he's got Second by Buskard. Yeah. First by DeSanto. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> George? No. Okay. Four eyes, one no. Thank you, George. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Thank you, Commissioner. Motion to go into executive session? What? Already? Well, we can't do planning and zoning, so. Oh, we're going to do an executive session first? Wow. Well, yeah, yeah, might as well. I don't oh, want to yeah, we got... sit around for an hour. Oh, what's wrong with you guys? We got done. You guys, you guys smoked through everything. <laughs> Too much to do. Can we go in executive session, Jay? Do we get them here? They have three personnel items. Nick and Nick. Holly? Holly. I think we can go in executive session anytime. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. If you wanted to jump to number 19, right. we could do 19, 20, 21, 22. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I may. I, I. I will make a motion to jump to number nineteen. There a second. 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 Motion from go on to items nineteen, twenty twenty one and twenty two. Okay. Miss Holly. We have a nineteen eight. We need to. Oh, vote. I'm sorry. Vote. Motion I'm was ahead. by Great Buskerud. Buskerud second by Lacroix. Cool. I. We need to vote. All in favor say aye. Oh, oh, wait, 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 before we vote, I, technically these items occur after 1030. Will anybody be talking about them? Who knows? But technically they're after 1030, 19 and 20 and 21. I think these are mostly us, George. They all are. You didn't hear what I said, did you? I said probably nobody would be talking about them, but technically if anybody did want to talk about them. Okay, there's a motion on the floor. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Buskard? I kind of have to agree with George. Uh, I don't think anybody will talk about him because there's nobody here. But uh, 
I suppose, you know, we did have we did publish a agenda and I don't have a problem doing the executive session because no one's gonna be here for that. But, right, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, how about night okay. Let's vote on this and then and then if it doesn't pass we'll have other discussion. Okay, so all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? No. Aye. 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 Okay. Motion fails. Madam Chair, yes, we sir. did have somebody waiting. He got up and looked a little disgusted and walked out the door. He's with planning. He's an item for planning and zoning. Oh, he is. Okay. Yep. Okay. 19 uh, A, B, and maybe we could do 19 and 20 since, that, since that's us. I think you guys just go to executive session. I, mo in there. I move to go into executive session. Second. All in favor to go in motion by... Commissioner Farabee, second by Commissioner Buscrude. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, motion carries. No, and I should, have, I should make the motion, correct the motion for, to, for personnel purposes. Oh, for personnel purposes. Okay, thank you. Okay. 125-2 sub 1. 125-2 sub 1. No. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, motion carries. Motion to come out of executive session, please. So move. So moved by Buskrud, second by Commissioner DeSanto. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, motion carries. Next, we are on the items from. Wait, one uh, second, oh, I'm sorry. We have a motion I'm sorry. Out of yes, session. sir. Yes, sir. Sorry. No, you're good. You're good. Uh, good morning, Nick Stroud, HR Director for Pennington County. Um, coming out of executive session, I have a motion that I ask for. Um, your approval. The motion will read, we would allow our dispatch director to hire Nicole Miller outside of the wage policy up to step 12 on grade 15. Okay. So motion? moved. Second. Moved by DeSanto, second by LaCroix. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Can I, can I have you to repeat that? Motion carries. Thank you. Oh, don't, she needs it. Oh. She's got She's it. Gonna give it to yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kara. Yeah. Do you need a moment, Ms. Kara? Ms. Kara, do you need a moment? Just start. Okay. Mr. PJ, items from Planning and Zoning? Yes, ma'am. Uh, board of Adjustment, please. Okay, motion to go into a Board of Adjustment. So moved. Moved second. by LaCroix, second by DeSanto. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? <laughs> motion carries. Thank you. P.J. Conover, Director of Planning Department. The item before you is variant 1710 to reduce the minimum required lot size from 10 acres to 2.818 acres in a limited agriculture district. This is part of a planning process by the applicants. Uh, the subject property um, is going to be split into lot, proposed lot 3B and proposed lot 3A. 3B will still meet the minimum lot size requirement in a limited agriculture district of 10 acres. However, proposed lot 3A will not. Uh, this is condition one of a layout plat which was approved by the board on June 6, 2017 with 15 conditions. Um, there is significant floodplain on the property. None of the existing buildings appear to be in the floodplain. And from what we understand from the applicants, the proposed single family residence um, on proposed lot 3B will not be built in the, in the floodplain. Uh, this was routed through the interdepartmental review and just concerns about the, uh, the special flood hazard area on the property with the only items that came back. Um, within a half mile of this subject property, there are certain zonings that have average lot sizes. General agriculture can anywhere between 445 and 639 acres. Limited agriculture 0.61 and up to 12 acres within a half mile. Uh, low density residential between one and six acres. Planned unit developments between 0.02 and three acres. And suburban residential between 1.01 and 6.9 acres. And again, their request is to have a 13 plus acre lot and a 2.7 plus acre lot in limited agriculture district. With a variance, the zoning ordinance requires the Board of Adjustment to determine four specific criteria are met, that specific circumstances or conditions such as acceptable narrowness and topography or siting exist. Staff has verified through a site visit that there are no particular physical conditions which warrant, which warrant approval of this lot size variance. That the variance does not grant a use which is otherwise excluded from this particular district. This lot size variance would not grant a use which is otherwise excluded in the limited agriculture district. The third item is that due to the specific circumstances or existing conditions, strict application of the zoning ordinance would be an unwarranted hardship. 
Uh, the strict application of zoning ordinance would require the proposed lot 3A to, uh, of tract A of METS addition to meet the minimum lot size of 10 acres in the limited agriculture district. And there is limited buildable space due to the special flood hazard area. Uh, item D, that granting of a variance is not contrary to the public interest and is in harmony with the general purpose and intent of the zoning district. And granting this lot size does not appear to be contrary to public interest, but would allow for a 2.18 acre lot and appears to be in harmony with the average lot size in the zoning areas within a half mile. If the Board of Adjustment approves variance 1710, staff does not recommend any conditions be included as any concerns or requirements will be addressed through the platting process. Any questions from the board? No. Any motions from the board? Any comment from the public? I make a motion to approve. Motion to approve Very by nice. LaCroix. Is there a second? Second for discussion. Second by DeSanto. Discussion, please. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. A uh, motion to come out of Board of Adjustment? So moved. Second. By DeSanto, second by LaCroix. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, motion carries. PJ, consent calendar, please. The Board of Commissioners uses a consent agenda to act on non-controversial and routine planning and zoning items quickly. The consent agenda is acted on by one motion and vote of the Board. Items may be removed from the consent agenda and placed on the regular agenda at the request of a board member or a citizen. The consent agenda for planning and zoning contains the following items. Item B, Plan Unit Development Review 0804 for Linda Kramer, and the approval has been recommended by the Planning Commission. Item C, planning, Plan Unit Development Review 0607, Rapid City MHP LLC for Cimarron Mobile Home Park. Planning Commission recommends that this be continued to the September 5th, 2017 Board of Commissioners meeting. Item D, Vacation of Platt 1701 for Walter Horton. Planning Commission recommends that it be continued to the September 5th, 2017 Board of Commissioners meeting. Anyone from the public would like to speak on B, C, and D on the consent calendar? Anybody from the board? Motion, please. Move to approve the consent agenda. Move by LaCroix. Second. Second by DeSanto to approve the consent calendar. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, motion carries. Next, we're on item E. Item E is a request to waive building permit penalty fees for Gabrielle Miller. Um, department of Equalization was out to this property and was just doing a routine visit and then notified our department that uh, what they had of record, which was a single wide mobile home, uh, was no longer there on the property. And so we reached out to the landowner on record. Uh, she came in, we met with, for a few hours to determine what needed to be done on the property. They've applied for the necessary building permits. Um, and so they're ask, uh, she's requesting that uh, the late charge of $757 be waived. She would still be motion. responsible for the 757 building permit fee. I make a motion to remove the 757, or waive the $757. By DeSanto? Penalty. There's second. I'll second. Second by Commissioner Farabee. Any discussion? Madam Chair. Yep. Commissioner DeCroy. You know, I'll be the first to admit I've been fairly inconsistent on my votes on waiving these penalties and so forth. But when I was overlooking on this one, I don't believe it's a good move to do that for the simple fact, you know, we're looking at, I understand it was 14 years, is that what it is, PJ? How long has it been? Before the new owner. About it that, was yeah. before the new owner, but if I understand right, it's been to being, when I look at this and they say there was a mobile home on it, I'm getting taxed as a mobile home for, and the property for that. And so, by in all reality, when I get my tax bill, I know Something's not right between a mobile home and a stick-built house. So I'm, I'm, I'm not going to uh, be in favor of this motion. To the I'd make a substitute motion to deny. Second. Um, there's been a motion and second, uh, a substitute to deny. Um, 
Do we have the applicant here? Yes. Okay. Hi, I'm Gabrielle Miller. Hi, Gabrielle. Um, do you have anything to say on Commissioner LaCroix had said, you know, your tax bill said mobile home? It does not. I am being taxed as a stick bill. Mm. Let's, can we find that out? Because... Look it up right now. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for Gabrielle? Uh, Madam Chair, while he's looking it up, how long have you lived there? Um, I've lived there for two years. I've owned it for th uh, three, nearly three years. And then you've paid taxes as, as far as you know, as a stick, stick, stick built? As far as I know, yes. Yep. That the minute said something about 14 years. We can do it faster on this. Okay. So, so. Thank you. Mm be able to interpret these documents better than we can but here's the parcel report coming up from the Department of Equalization on our website uh, go to the next page let me know when you want me to go to the next one Manufactured home on there, but if they if you go to next page, yeah. So that was a mobile home with the addition. picture is yeah the picture is not the 1969. Yeah, no single family so, residence. Yeah, ranch so you, style. That's what you're getting taxed as, but they did change it to where they put it all on one land in the house properly. That's why you're not seeing the manufactured thing. Yeah, they're getting taxed as a ranch style home. Right there, description. Well, of you do combine them with the land. You can combine them. instead of how they used to be separate. Yeah. They they you can combine them now as one, so you're yeah, paying one tax bill. Nine. But garage two. We could possibly, if there's some confusion, table it and ask somebody from equalization to look into this. And there's going to be one more agenda item. We have to gonna... vote. Any? We have to vote. Yep. So, any discussion on the substitute? Substitute is to table it. I think that's. I would table it. And... Look into it more. Well, what you're looking for is a substitute to the substitute to, yes. to continue it for more information. To, yeah, to I think the original substitute was to, de de not to no. deny, but okay. we can but, have staff no. go up and grab somebody from equalization to come down. But the second substitute is to table. postpone until we have more information. Well, it's postponed. So the table means it's gone. But table means you okay. sit on the table until no, we pull no. it back off. Well, during the meeting, you can table during the meeting, but are we going to find out during the meeting or next meeting? Well, that was the intent because we have a few more items, probably going to be at least 45 minutes that okay. so we let's, could do it after those. Is it okay if you table it, George? If, if we can do it to, during the meeting, yes. That's, okay. the, that's what we're going okay. to Okay. There's been a yet. substitute to the substitute to table. All second. in favor say, yeah. sorry, second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, motion carries. Okay. Gabriel, we're going to find more information for you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Next is item F, and that would be request to waive building permit fees, Moni Newcomb. Uh, same situation, same subdivision. Um, the current owner is asking to waive a late charge of $593 for the necessary building permit to bring the property into compliance. Um, same issue as the last item that was up here. Um, there was a single wide mobile home that we had and equalization had of record on the property. Uh, since that time, though, um, other items have been constructed. The garage is put there prior to 94, so that's not of an, an issue. It's a single-family residence, which we had as a single, uh, single wide mobile home. Any questions, board? Or a motion? I guess I'm in the same boat as this last one. I'd like to know what it was taxed. So you want to table this one? and then move on? I think it'd be fine. They both came in together, they're neighbors. Okay. Yeah. Motion. Second. Move to table. Motion to table. Second. Second, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, motion carries. Next would be request of approval of building permit outside of county zoning ordinance, sure. Al Dial. Uh, this is a request from Al Dial uh, for the Board of Commissioners to put in writing a request for, to have the Planning director sign a building permit for a single family residence that does not meet our zoning ordinance. Um, this is a, the property in question is highlighted in orange. At the, and currently it is zoned low dense, I'm sorry, limited uh, industrial. And in a limited industrial, you're allowed to have a residence on the property if it serves as a caretaker's residence and the building or service that it's serving exists on the same property. In this instance, it's the property that's highlighted in red just to the northwest as where the caretaker's residence would be for. So therefore, uh, the applicant cannot apply for a single family residence in the light industrial district. The applicant has uh, submitted a rezone for this property and the one immediately adjacent to the west of it to rezone it from light industrial to suburban residential. This is a copy of the future land use that shows both of those properties and the two to the north uh, to be suburban residential. Um, okay. Just because of our zoning ordinance, we cannot approve a residence in light industrial. But in his future, he, he's going to make it. He's going through the process okay. right now, correct. Okay. Any questions or motion from the board? I'd like to oh. ask PJ, did yep. we okay. have something similar it wasn't light industrial in hill city not too long ago then we approved building permit while they were, we were waiting for commercial to yeah, yeah this was the, can, the that, candy that was land the, the candy three stores, stores. Yep. yep he was going through the platting process and you you approved the building permit to go across existing lot lines while they were going through yeah. the process and there's never any guarantee that the plat would have been approved or this rezone is going to be approved that's what we come before you. So can we do the same with this one? Say he's, out, he's got all his paperwork going and he start and he does the building permit. And he, he has applied already. And he's applied. And so he starts breaking ground and we're waiting for the zoning. Get, and if something unforeseeable happens to where the zoning doesn't get changed, mm -hmm. then we do a stop work order. Well, we'd probably, we talked to the landowner and he, they would know well ahead of time, but we'd probably do a conditional use permit to allow it on that property that way. Okay. Yep. Okay. The, re the applicant was given multiple ways of doing this. Um, this is one of the longer ways, but it's the more permanent way of doing it. So it's gonna, it fits in with his future plans for this area better than anything else at this time. That would be the rezone, be specific. So he's, he's starting that process, which is the right way to go. Correct, he's already applied and it's been routed out and so far no items of concern have come back from any departments. Okay, and so what he's asking is to have us issue, give you permission to issue the, the building permit. While it's still light industrial, While correct. It's still if, it was, if it was suburban residential, other than waiting for septic inspection, there would be no issue with it. Okay. Actually, I believe our environmental planner has already done a profile hole inspection on the property. Do we have a motion? I would move to approve. Moved Second. by DeSanto. Second. Second by Farabee. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries.
H is the first reading public hearing of major plan unit development, Kelly Development. Ryan Kelly. First reading of public hearing of major plan unit development 1709 for Kelly Development. Ryan Kelly as the agent to amend the plan unit development. Um, Planning Commission recommended approval of major plan unit development 1704 with stated 21 conditions. We noticed that number eight is missing, but actually only 21 conditions that we need. This has been before you several times as a minor, as a uh, layout plat, as a minor plat. Um, it's been at the Planning Commission level several times. Uh, what he's doing is basically taking this existing tract B and converting it into uh, lots three, four, five, and six, and also dedicating um, some extra right of way. Uh, some of the concerns that came back were primarily from the neighbors to the north, also about the wells. I can tell you that the Planning Commission has worked extensively with Mr. Kelly and with the neighbors, and they were all present at the last meeting, and they worked through the concerns and reworded the conditions right. um, so that all parties are satisfied. Um, unless you need me to go through or anything, staff would recommend approval. Oh, let me go back here. Of plan, a major plan unit development amendment 1704 with 21 conditions. Do you have a questions or a motion? I would move for approval. Moved by Commissioner DeSanto, second by. I'll second it for discussion. Hadcock. Any discussion? Madam Chair. Commissioner LeGray. This is, seems like it's been pretty rocky road to get where we're at today, I think, with this. That's why I was, when I was reading through it over the weekend, I, I wanted to make sure that Planning Commission had done their diligence with this, and you're agreeing with that, BJ? That yes. It, yeah. and, and the representative from the HOA to the north, I mean, she appeared to be satisfied with how they had worded everything at the Planning Commission as well. I'm not sure if she came in after. Yeah, I don't see either one of the, the gals from HOA here. Uh, so. No. Any other questions? Do we have a motion on the floor? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Number aye. Did I miss anybody from the public on that? I apologize. Uh, okay. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner. Aye, sir. Yep. Item I is first reading public hearing, <coughs> excuse me, of major plan unit development. Do we want to go back to uh, Shannon's here? Do we want to go back to the other No, items? I think we'll finish and then come back, George, if that's okay. Go ahead. Aye. Yep. Uh, first reading of public hearing of major plan unit development amendment 1707 for Donna and Lyle Hartshorn to rezone 4.3 acres from highway service to plan unit development and to amend the existing plan unit development uh, to include a maximum of 60 vendors on a subject property for the <coughs> proposed, excuse me, farmer's market. This was approved um, in 2016. Uh, what you see on the board, it's a little difficult to see behind you, is what the original plan unit development is for. Uh, what they have done is they've purchased this property and are looking to expand uh, the use on the property. And instead of having 30 vendors allowed during the farmer's market to allow up to 60, which also increased the need for parking. And what Donna is looking at is putting parking along this road right here. Pretty much everything else in the plan new development that was originally proposed stands. Also, the most important thing about the existing plan unit development and this proposed amendment is that these are overlays on the property. Ms. Hartshorn's primarily concern is that it maintain ag um, zoning because their main concern is their, their cattle. So they have these uses. Once these uses go away, it reverts back to general agriculture, and the property that they did purchase with the X on it would revert back to highway service. Um, I didn't see her in the office today or in the room today. But planning staff would recommend approval of major plan unit development amendment 1707 with 28 conditions. Questions or motion? Board. Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Just a note, um, at the planning commission meeting, this was discussed pretty extensively and several of the neighbors commented and uh, agreed that if certain conditions were met, they didn't have an issue with moving forward with this, so I would 
Make a motion to approve. Moved by DeSanto. Second. Second by LaCroix. Anybody from the public would like to speak on this item? This is item I. Okay. If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Item J. Item J is appeal of a conditional use permit number 1725 for Donald Wachowski and Lisa Lorzell as the agent, which is to allow one pole barn and three greenhouse structures in a suburban residential district, and to allow one pole barn structure in a suburban residential district um, to remain after a single a double wide mobile home is removed from the property. Um, the Rec Planning Commission recommended approval of conditional use permit 1725 with 10 conditions. And since that time, it was appealed. Uh, we received the appeal on July 17, 2017. Um, so I'll kind of walk you through this real quick. Um, the agent's brother owns the four highlighted parcels. Uh, the two, the, the parcel immediately to the east, which is says vacant, actually all of these are vacant right now. Um, in discussions with the agent and the owner, it says he doesn't have, he doesn't have any plans to build anything on, those proper, on that property. The item all the way to the west, uh, the 20 acre or 19 plus acre property, he's looking to put a pole barn and a double wide mobile home. Part of this conditional use permit is to allow that pole barn to remain once the double wide mobile home is moved to the property to the southeast where it says DWMH um, because a, a structure cannot exist on a property without conditions. Um, so we, they're just taking care of that now. So his plan is to build a double wide and a pole barn on that west property and then eventually move the double wide to that southeast center property. On the property directly to the north and the center, his plans are to put a pole barn and multiple greenhouses. Um, it was stated, I believe, that he wants greenhouses because um, planting and trees and vegetation is a hobby of his. Um, the two Properties in the center are located in a Duggar Road district. They both gain access. I'm going to come back a little bit here. This is a, this is a May 4th, uh, 2017 Google image. So all the properties are off of this easement, which goes through this gentleman's property, and then gains access through here now. Originally, that easement only allowed access to the center two parcels. But the landowner was, lo was looking to add that pole barn and the double wide on the west side, so he had to change the easement. Since that time, they have worked together. They have recorded a new easement, which has updated, uh, been updated and allows the applicant access to those four lots. However, the restriction on that easement is that only two single-family residents can be built on those four lots, which the applicant has said um, that he doesn't have plans on doing anything more than that. Um, this was routed through the interdepartmental review. Rapid City Planning Department services said the future land use is forest conservation, which allows for single family residents. Uh, Rapid City Engineering recommended, um, didn't have any objection as it was also forest service, which allows for residents. They were concerned, however, about the uh, accessory structures, which would have been, which were gonna be the greenhouses. Um, they were concerned about the, the water with that. Um, staff comment is that the applicant indicated the greenhouses would be for personal use only. Uh, they were concerned about a commercial use of the greenhouses. Um, there, were, there are five considerations for conditional use permit requests, kind of like a variance has four, conditional use permits have five. Um, item number one, that the effect upon the use and enjoyment of the property in the immediate vicinity uh, for use is already permitted and upon property values within the immediate vicinity. Again, this is the original staff report, so things have slightly changed since then. Um, but at that time, there was, there was no uh, effect seen that would affect the surrounding properties. However, since the meeting, uh, some neighbors had come forth and spoke out against uh, this proposal, which is why it's before you today. Uh, second consideration is the effect upon the normal and orderly development and improvement of surrounding vacant properties for uses predominant in the area. Allowing this conditional use permit does not appear to affect the normal orderly development or improvement of any surrounding property in the area. Item three, that utilities, access roads, drainage, and their necessary facilities are provided. The applicants will be accessing both subject lots off of Miracle Road via an existing easement. The approach permit will be required to be obtained uh, with the building permit and it has to be approved through the road district. Uh, item four, that the off-street parking and loading requirements are met. Uh, this does appear to be met. There's plenty of room for parking. Um, item five, measures are taken to control offensive odor, fumes, dust, and noise, and vibrations and lighting. 
This pr proposed conditional use permit by very nature should have limited odor, fumes, noise, and vibrations, and intrusive lighting. Staff's original recommendation was to approve conditional use permit 1706 with nine conditions, which uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. was a little different than what the Planning Commission recommended. They recommended 10 conditions. The, app, the uh, agent is in the audience today. Okay. Any questions or motion for PG? Not. Do we have the appellants here? People. Okay. If you'd come up, ma'am, and state your name, please. Hi, my name is Julia Sisson. Julia Smith was one, was on the original, but it's Julia Sisson. Okay. Um, as listed on the appeal, our major concern is the impact of all of this on the suburban residential area and the water and the roads. Um, number one, Levita Drive has never been maintained by the county. I've lived out there for 36 years, and there's people who have lived there even longer than that. We all maintained it, or all worked together to try to maintain it. Then we finally formed a road association in the last four or five years, and they have... Um, since that time, we have meetings a couple of times a year. People discuss what's to be done, to mostly Levita Drive, what gravels to be added, uh, blading the roads, et cetera. So that's finally been done. The road has finally got in better condition. We have gravel on uh, Levita now. We've got it, we have it bladed regularly by a gentleman. And then my husband, Mike, and, one, and Mr. Fenner uh, together blade the snow on uh, Levita, and then he does Miracle Drive. Our main concern is the water and the impact on the area. Um, by reading through all of this, it just, and even the Rapid City Public Works and their questions is in regard to these greenhouses, it just sounds, quite frankly, pretty fishy. And it uh, doesn't sound right that people should be allowed to put up three 1,800 square foot greenhouses um, that they say are just to be used for fruit trees and nuts. Right now, we have issues with drought. We have, uh, we're on a three-party well and everybody is being very careful to water at different times of the day to make sure that we don't have problems with that well. Out of the 11 places in the area, there's already five people hauling water. That's an indication of we've already got some problems out there. This is below all that and, and the fact, if this was a residential area or one or two residential areas, you know, with normal water uses, that might be something we could work with. But this, this whole thing, with all these buildings and three 1,800 square greenhouses, to me, just sounds like poppycock. I mean, it's ridiculous to think that somebody's gonna put all that in for fruit trees or nut trees or whatever they are, for what? And what are they using the buildings for, for what? Is this all something that's gonna be coming up in the future? Um, very concerned about it. Uh, the impact on the water is the number one concern. Also, the impact on the safety of the area, because there's really no turnarounds uh, Levita Drive is big enough and wide enough for two cars to go up and down. Miracle Road, if you came out and looked at it, is a thin little road that you usually have to pull over the side to allow two cars to go up and down. The roads in the area are not built for all this extension. The first easement was given by Mr. Fenner. That easement never had a building permit to begin with. My husband found out about that because of all the noise and the dust to the east of us, he went over and questioned them, what are you, they doing? Then they came down and got their first building permit. Uh, that was, I think, previously owned by uh, another party and then it was maybe sold to this gentleman. Um, since that time, Mr. Fenner gave another easement on the road uh, and that was two weeks before our prior road association meeting that my husband attended, I wasn't there. But during that road association meeting, the um, the uh, modular was brought up, but nothing was brought up about this new ease, the new road. It, they just said they were moving a modular, and that's what was addressed at the road association meeting. So the main concerns here are number one, Levita Drive has finally been in pretty good shape. The first time they built the road with the first easement, Levita Drive was highly affected by all that construction equipment. The road was washboarded. All of us ended up taking care of that, having it plowed. It took about three or four years to get all the washboarding out of there. Um, fire safety is a big concern too because back when I first moved there, one of the neighbors had mentioned that there was only supposed to be so many homes on each extension of this 
area because of fire safety and making sure to get people. There's a lot of people have horses in the area. There's three or four properties with horses. Being able to get people out safely and also be able to load up horses and get everybody out of any uh, potential fire would be a concern. The impact on the area, I, th I think it will obviously create a lot of dust. Even when they did the first road, there was quite a bit of dust. Um, all these buildings, three greenhouses, it just seems very much not like something that shouldn't be in a suburban residential area. So that is our main concern. Also, I see that the Rap City Public Works and what was sent to us had some concerns about that not being um, uh, for personal use. If everybody in our area went all out and started popping in even one 1,800 square foot greenhouse and pulling water off, I think we'd all be running out of water quite quickly. So that's our major concern, and I hope you will uh, take it into consideration. Thank you, ma'am. Any you. questions? Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Ma'am. Commissioner DeSanto. Got a question for you, if you don't mind. What, it is, what is it exactly that with these buildings that makes you feel that it's going to increase the amount of traffic on that road other than once it once it's built well after that what's going to increase the amount of traffic it, it depends on what they use it for if it doesn't seem like we've got a couple nice residents that are that are residences that are going to be going in there it seems like we're putting in pole barns and a and a uh, modular and then three greenhouses that would indicate to me a question as to what what kind of traffic is going to come in there just to build all that even after it's in what what's it going to be used for is this a i mean fruit trees and nuts well he's he has said that he's does that as a hobby and it for me it's difficult to question somebody's motives um for future use you're you're suggesting that he may or i should ask you are you suggesting that he may turn this into a commercial business. We're, we're unaware of that as, as you are, but we're very concerned about that. We don't know why, I mean, an 1,800 square foot greenhouse, just one would be, use a lot of water. So our main concerns are the, not only effect on the road, but what's it gonna do? I think the last meeting we were here, they asked if there was any uh, study done on the water, and at that time, I think they said no. So what impact will it have on our water? I do understand your concern there. That's that is an area where and, and the road if you came and drove down the road and went up and down the road as many times as i had and plowed it personally like we did on little tractors and knew how much work that we've done as just the 10 people or 11 people that have, were out there trying to maintain this road before when the county never maintained it it was a lot of grueling years of trying to get your kids to school get them out to the bus stop and now all of a sudden it's like we'd get this road association get the road in pretty good shape, and then this comes along, and what impact is that going to have? Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe, maybe somebody should come in and build a curb and gutter and and develop the whole area so you can put all this stuff in. But I'd like to be. I, 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 the big question is: suburban residential doesn't usually sound like all pole barns and, and three big greenhouses. It just it just has a big question mark. Mm -hmm. It really does in our mind. And what impact on the area? It would be dusty. It would be noisy. Even when they made the one road, it was it was dusty and noisy. So, and we also objected to the second road because that was not brought up at our our last road association. They just mentioned the mobile home. Nobody said that they had a uh, they were going to build another road. And then we found out about that and came to the last meeting. So, any other questions okay. for Miss Smith, Mr. Santo? Any other questions? No. Okay. Okay. And do we have the applicant, Donna, Donald, okay, I ain't saying that name, <laughs> and Lisa Lurzel? Won't you chow speak? Okay. Get, we'll have her speak, sir, then you. Thank you. I'm Lisa Lurzel, agent for Don Wojciechowski. Okay. Any questions for Lisa? Ms. Lurzel? Just, I'd ask the question, she made the comment of three 1,500-square-foot greenhouses. You were in the Planning Commission, but what, what are they for? Just growing stuff. Okay. It's not necessarily going to be exactly three. What the conditional use permit said 
was up to three at this square footage each. Okay. Because he really doesn't know what he's going to do. He might put two on there. They might be 20 by 20. He might put three 20 by 30s. He might put one 30 by 60. But when we went to planning, planning said, if you're going to do, if you think you're going to do something, put it in there now. Because then you're just going to have to come back. So quite frankly, he doesn't really know what he's going to do until he gets on the land. And he will be in the modular, the double wide. And then while he's there, he's going to be building a stick built house. So the pole barn is for storage and everything. And I did take pictures um, at each of those sites. Uh, these people were saying that it's going to ruin their view and not in my backyard in the previous meeting. And so I wanted to address that. So I have. Can we see your pictures? Pictures Lisa? this morning. Okay. Holly, do we? I never received any pictures. Um, no email. PJ, Lisa. do you have the pictures? You said you had received them. I actually have. Um, no. What she sent me was something different. I actually have them on a stick that I could show you. Okay. That works, Miss right? Holly. You can put that okay. in for you. Thank you, Miss Lisa. Oh, we're waiting for that. I'll just make my comment. <clears throat> That I, I think that that was probably right. That you know, he, just from listening to the previous testimony, it made it sound like he was going to do bang, bang, bang three. But now it makes sense that he just wants to be able to have that option. He don't know exactly nothing set in stone that he's doing. Going to exactly. go in there, do three houses. Okay. And and he can only do two houses. Or I'm talking the three green For the houses. access yeah. easement. But he only intends on doing one. So if anything, he's reducing density in the area on 50 acres. So hopefully that will help. And then the water usage, that's the whole idea to how you use a greenhouse. You can have drip lines. It has an automatic greenhouse effect. You can serve water. You put mulch in there to save water. There's many things that you can do. Be the first one. Yes. Oh, great. So the first picture. And then you can just Give us just a second. We lost Commissioner DeSanto. Advance through. <laughs> okay. So give us just a minute, Miss Lisa, for our commissioner to come back okay. so we can see the pictures. We're waiting for you on the pictures. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, ma'am. May I hand you these Google Earth photographs so you can see from which location we're looking at? Okay. Okay. Do we have those already, PJ, or no? We have them on part of PowerPoint, but I don't believe you have these yet. Okay. Thank you. This is bigger. It's a bigger picture, which is nice. Okay, Miss Lisa. So, this is the 30 by 80 pole barn right here. And he's pretty sure on that we're looking at plans. So, that's a go with we get approved. Yeah. And so, the residents that are, are complaining, these people, live here. And that's where I, I wrote. This home is over 800 feet from proposed structures. It's pretty much from all the proposed structures. So this is where we're looking to. Okay. Should I show them on this first? I was going to flip back and yeah. forth between yeah. the two for you. That'd be better. Then everybody can see. First one? Yeah. Okay, so, and I can no. run the mouse? Uh, it won't pick up on the recording, so, like okay. that. Okay, so this pole barn 
looking this direction is the first picture. How do I get back to the first picture, Pigeon? I need you. Yep, yep, we're going to tag team it. You're, you're her assistant, PJ. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's looking northwest towards these people's property. And it's heavily wooded. And when you get the, to the top of that ridge behind where the, the wood stack is, it goes down a deep gully, possibly 100 to 150, maybe even 200 feet. Then up again onto a ridge. And then at the very last picture, I have a panorama view from that property border back down. So the second picture is from here, and the third are from here, back up again towards this direction. Okay. And that's the area. It's just a little grassy meadow. It is sloped. It looks flat there, but it is sloped. <laughs> and that would be the only place really conducive to put something like that. Um, it would also be a good future home site if you ever sold the property for a second dwelling. And then the greenhouse could be easily moved because um, they're portable. Okay, and then... No, no pictures or PowerPoint? Let's go to the next picture. This is the area for the double wide. And it is also facing towards these people's house. Miss Smith. I'm sorry? They're Miss Smith. Miss Smith? Yes. Okay. Mrs. Oh, Mrs. Sisson? Okay. Sisson? I thought you said Smith, sorry. Smith was the main one. Sisson. Okay, thank you. Sissons. Thank you. So then let's go back to the map. And then... Keep your hairs off. Okay, and then I came from... Approximately here. Whoops. Whoops. Okay. We're going to have to do it. Okay. I'm sorry. That's I, wanna, good. I don't want to keep going through them all now. This is the last one. So I can go on up one more. Hold on. We'll start from the back side. Okay. You can go back to the other one. It's a little bit clearer. So I came to right here is, is, is very, very far down. This is very far down. So I climbed up to right about here and shot back. You so the show them what you're talking about. first picture is towards here. And the second picture is towards there. Actually, the first one might be down a little bit more, and the other one down this way. So the, this, these last ones are the panor panoramic view. Okay. And one of the things that the Sissons had said in the past meeting is, we don't want to look at this and not in our backyard, but I don't know that they'd ever be able to see it. So uh, next picture. Hold on, guys. Hold on. You guys can come back up if you'd like. Okay. okay. Thank you. On that picture, Lisa, the first picture you showed. Sir? It's her turn to speak, sir. That one. That is right. Sir? Uh-uh. No, I know. You can come up, sir. Thank you. And I'll give you access to the okay. pictures, too. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I appreciate that, sir. So this is on the border of their property and Donald's property. And it's looking towards where the structures would be. And as you can see, it's heavily wooded. If you look at, can I write on this? Well, let's see what happens. Okay. <laughs> this tree here is the next, it's, it'll be the left side of the picture coming up. Okay, go to the next one, which is here. So that's the panoramic view all the way across. And He just wants to build his house, and because there's 40 acres, he has to use this conditional use permit. Because of the small area, there's a primary structure without the secondary structures, and that's why we're here. Okay. So, any questions, board? For Miss Lisa? No. Okay. Thank you. Mrs. Sisson, sir, would you like to come up to the mic, sir? <clears throat> Thank you. Hold on just a sec. You got to get to the mic, sir. I'm just confused. Did I come 
Yeah, yeah. would you help me with this? Yeah. Yes. I, I want you to explain it to me, if you could, those first pictures, because the two of them are right in our backyard. <laughs> yeah, would you do this for me? We're not trying to be. Nope, you're good, sir. But I, I've been taking care of this property for <laughs> probably 35 years. Uh, and we've had snowstorms that I've, I've taken all the debris out, and that's my stack of wood. <laughs> no, that's not your stack of okay, wood. Okay, that's Let my confusion. Let me show See, you where we are. Lisa, let him speak a little bit. No, okay. that's fine. I, I, I'm, for some odd reason, this seems like it's my backyard, but you're saying it's not. It's so beautiful, isn't it? I know it? it is. Okay. All right, show <laughs> no. me where I'm at. Okay. So, can you... Where is our up? Where is our house? Um, Are okay, we up? Okay, so your house oh, is... Here's where you come down at Fenner's, the okay. turnaround, and then you go from the pole. This is the pole barn site. Okay. And it's at the very highest part that I could stand to see if I could see anything. And okay. So you had to go all the way up here and then way down into that really big gully on the right. other side. Right, right, I get that. And then up the gully, and your place is way We're back We're over, over there. here then. Yeah. Okay, see, and that's, that was my question. I, I didn't know, and we were talking to some people, and they said, well, it shouldn't bother you at all. And I go, well, that's fine. No problem. And your place is beautiful up there, too. It, it is, <laughs> yes, it is. Very nice. And that's where this picture, I thought, well, that looks like my backyard. Sir. And that's where I was spooked. Okay, sir, do you have any questions or anything that you want to um, tell us today? I was going to get to it. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Lisa, for helping us. And the, if... if and this 650-foot road, that's over on this property. It's the driveway. The driveway to get to the properties. Yeah. Okay. You can come up, Miss Sisson. Thank you. Last time we couldn't do that. The road district. Okay. What, what picture do you want? Okay, there's... There's us right there. That is us. And what we and when we, all this is going to be taking place down in the valley. Down in here, he's saying a pole barn. Okay. And then here and here and this is all the other acreage. Okay. So the so the structure okay. is going to be down below yeah. where the original all the land. structures are basically going to be down below. Not up, right behind right, my so. backyard. Right. All the structures are going to be down, down below us. Okay. So what's your question, sir? That was all I needed to know. I don't have a question. Okay. okay. Thank you. I wanted to know exactly where it was going because it, it looked like it was in our backyard. Okay. That, thank that you, That was sir. the only complaint that I had. Thank you, sir. Okay, hey. board. Um, any questions? Can I make one more comment? Yes, ma'am. still have, I still want to reiterate our concerns about the impact of the water and the road. Thank you, sir. Our Thank you so much. Thank you. Madam Chair. One more. Come on up, sir. To state your name. My name is Frank Fenner. Right, to the mic, sir. And I'm the original guy that gave the easement. Okay. I'm going to give you a little history. These were landlocked properties. All they had was the ravine below us and to the side between the citizens and this property. And actually that land goes into a deep ravine and comes up behind the citizens. Okay, the county never ever allowed any access to this property. I've been fighting this for nine, since 94. And finally, I basically was uh, threatened by a lawyer who was a property lawyer. And there's what they call reasonable access, okay? If you really knew how the property lied, there was no reasonable access other than through me, okay? Well, then there's certain rules and regulations that you have to follow to give reasonable access. You know, it was supposed to be a 40-foot driveway. No, they, the county wanted 66-foot right away, and all these different things. Well, we went through the hoops. They got a basically a 30-foot driveway, which the actual usage is 15 feet. So it's not 30-foot of usage driveway. 
It's a driveway, it's not a road. And it has to be adamant about that. This is one man that's living on this property. Every property in this area has affected the road. Every property that was built. Water. I'm one of the guys that lost the well. Two other people that are in that same well with me lost the water too. But it had nothing to do with any of the wells in that area. It had to do with countryside. When countryside uh, got approved to drill three more wells and add to their system, that's when we lost our water. We were in the Madison Formation, no water for us. We deepened our well. We went all the way to the Deadwood. We had five, six gallons a minute. That's a whole nother story. Uh, but there's good water, you know. And I know there's water there. But the, the well driller was mad at us and plugged us off, and we didn't have no money to fight him. This gentleman wants his <clears throat> permanent final home, so to speak. I don't know if he's going to build any greenhouses. He first came to me, it was, he was calling a modular home a mobile home. There's definite difference. <coughs> this is a modular home, is what he's purchasing, to put on this property as a temporary housing while he builds his, and he said, $800,000 home in the middle of this property. And I said, well, don't do it in the middle. Put it on one 10-acre parcel or the other. Well, in the process, the 20 acres that he had purchased was landlocked. No access. Well, <laughs> who's obviously going to be the access? Me. So he comes to me, and we talk about it, and we discuss it. And I said, as long as the increase in occupancy does not increase I have no problem, you know. I don't care where you put those two uh, houses if you decide to build two houses. You can have it on the first 10, you can have it on the second 10, you can have it on the 20. But you're not going to build a bunch of homes in there on my so-called back the property. I'm a little nervous, so <laughs> bear with me. You're doing good. Uh, <laughs> So in the history of this, I gave, basically unlocked the land from being locked. There's the other 10 acre parcel. He's actually got 50 in there. He's got a 20, two 10s, and a 10. That 10 acre parcel has got access on paper. If you've tried to find where that paper or where that access was, you'd find that it's on the other side of the canyon below him. You can't dive off a 100-foot canyon and then, you know, where they put the new road down into, to, uh, oh, that subdivision right below us. They, they put the road in and put the road way up there, 60, 70 feet. Well, so he's got to dive off a 70-foot road, go through the bottom, come up the other side to access that other 10-acre parcel. So technically, even though he's got written access, he doesn't have no access to that parcel. So there's another piece of property that's not landlocked in that area. But he doesn't have a problem with that because he owns the 40. <clears throat> Kurt Anderson, who's the, the primary owner of the properties in here, is the one that's holding the 20 and the other 10. And he said, all he wanted to be is left alone. I want to do my thing. He's a, personally, he's a, he's a well driller. Makes good money. Doesn't have a family. He has this hobby. He likes to grow things. He's here probably, what, four months out of the year? Four months out of the year. So he wants to build a house down there that's going to maintain, him, maintain itself for that, the other eight months. 
He's one person. The impact of one person on this road is immaterial, minuscule. So you're for this? Oh, you darn right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sir. Thank and, you. You know, I mean, I don't believe that anybody has control over another man's property. Yes, sir. As long as he follows the rules and regulations of the county and the city. Thank That's you. another concern. Part of the property is in the city, not one mile zone, and the rest of it isn't. You know, so you're dealing with two entities all the time. We appreciate <clears throat> of course, that. that was a recent thing. Madam Chair, I'm well on. wise, well wise, the other well that they were mentioning that they lost their water, according to Corey, and I don't know his last name, sorry, he says they just lost their pump. Well, to pull a pump, seven, eight hundred feet out of the ground is a lot of money. To buy a new pump and reinstall it is a lot of money. You're going to have ten, twelve, fifteen thousand dollars in it. Him and the neighbor that owns that well, they ain't got the fifteen thousand dollars. They got families. All right, sir. We, we I, I think moved. we we I got moved. you understand. We got, yes, we got we and understand. The old I moved. Adage of not in my backyard. Okay. I don't want to hear. I that. have a motion. Okay. I, I, I moved to uphold the Planning Commission's <clears throat> decision. We have a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second by DeSanto. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Brittany Molitor, Environmental Planning Supervisor. Um, item K is a request for a vacation of a section line BS 1702 to vacate the section line right away lying in the southeast quarter, the northeast quarter, and the northeast quarter of the southeast quarter of section nine, and in the southwest quarter and the northwest quarter, and the northwest quarter and southwest quarter of section 10. Um, the applicant is requesting to vacate approximately 2,800 feet. Um, that number actually came from me just as a designation to get an idea of how much. Um, it's it's probably more in the 2,400 feet range. Um, the south portion of this property currently consists, uh, was previously disturbed as a quarry by a prior property owner. Vacating this section line right away can allow for future disturbance within the right away and to bring into compliance the existing disturbance. Uh, petition requirements for a vacation of section line, state law SDCL 3136 um, requires that in order to vacate a portion of a section line right away, um, signatures from 1% of the votes cast in the last gubernatorial election are required. Um, the Pennington County Auditor's Department did verify that 335 signatures were received by their office on May 16th, 2017. Um, existing conditions. Um, currently, it, it's zoned General Agriculture and Highway Service District. Um, it's approximately 241.32 acres. Um, there is a small structure on the property, a 14 by 18 building. Um, there is a sand gravel mining operation that was located in the south Eastern portion of this property since 1982. Uh, the access to this property is off of Highway 16. Um, this was routed through the interdepartmental review. Um, there was only one item of concern that came up from Black Hills Electric Cooperative um, that indicated they would like to stress how important section lines are for utilities. Um, so staff did address that as one of the conditions. Um, so staff is recommending approval of vacation of section line 1702 with three conditions. Do you have a motion? So moved. What? So moved by Buscrude, second, second. by... LaCroix, any discussion? All in favor say well, aye. Well, well, uh, Madam Chair, the, uh, you mentioned the Black Hills Co-op, or was it Black Hills Co-op or, co or Corporation? Um, Black Hills Electric Cooperative. Um, and their concern is addressed how? Uh, it is addressed as um, condition number two, that a utility easement is created and filed with register of deeds along or adjacent to the existing section line right away for future development. And they're okay with that. The applicants? The, both the applicants and the co-op. I haven't heard that they weren't. Um, Any other questions? The, uh, yes, I, I do. The, okay. the purpose, the stated purpose 
of vacating the section line is to bring into compliance the previous disturbance? That's part of it. Um, also, in, for a section line, in order to section it off or limit access, you typically have to have it vacated. You can't lock a gate or anything like that on a section line unless it's vacated. And with an existing quarry there with safety, I wouldn't think that you would want someone accessing that by the public. Um, second, or follow-on question, Madam Chair, the, uh, um, do the applicants intend to, to, to what extent do they intend to disturb the, the right-of-way that hasn't been disturbed? That is a question of the applicant there in the audience. Please. What's your question, George? Mm. Can you say it again? The, the purpose of the vacation, as I understand it, was two, twofold. One is to correct the, the previous noncompliance, which is, to me, crazy. But, but secondly, was to, to, to allow more disturbance. And my question is, what's the extent of that further disturbance and that you know, 100 feet deep, 200 feet deep, two feet? Uh, Kyle Freisinger, Kroll Ready Mix. Um, we are currently um, in litigation in regards to a construction permit. So as of today, we have no indication that we'll be disturbing uh, any undisturbed property. Ever? As of right now, we do not have a permit until the Supreme Court uh, gives us a ruling. Well, my motion then is, to, is a substitute motion is, is to delay this decision and, until that decision is made. I agree. I agree. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Question. Question. LaCroix? My question is legal. How legal is that to do? I mean, just no more than a month ago, we, we approved a vacation, uh, the exact same thing for somebody else. And here we are wanting to, you know, understand the litigation, but we vacated the right away for another person no more than a month ago. But it wasn't for the... No, no, no more than a month ago. For Madam Chair, if I might... But guys, it, it guys, wasn't, nope. My question Wait. is for our attorneys, is not for... Jay, is there any reason why this shouldn't be approved before that litigation is approved? I don't see why you couldn't. And it seems to me what, what I've heard, and maybe I've not been entirely informed, is the public safety issue, despite or in spite of the uh, litigation off to the side, the public safety issue of this, it seems somewhat like a no-brainer that you don't want the public entering um, a, a mine site even at its current status, let alone what might be Future. after the Supreme Court rules. So um, I thought that was the impetus and purpose for this primarily, and it makes sense to me, but, but it's not my decision. But I don't see why you couldn't go forward today. Madam Chair. Um, Commissioner DeSanto. Is that the purpose, to prevent people from coming into the mine site? Well, it, it's, it's several fold. I mean, um, uh, safety is our biggest concern. It's been an active mine site. It is an active mine site. And our hope is it'll be a future mine site. Um, it does have high walls. We are regulated by the Mine Safety and Health Administration. Um, we cannot have unauthorized uh, individuals, hunters, visitors, hikers on our property, on any mine site, no matter where it's at. Safety is our number one concern. The other issue is the section line was disturbed by prior landowners. Um, this was a recommendation by planning and zoning staff that this would get this more in compliance um, because we did not do the disturbance. Very good. Thank you. <clears throat> Madam Chair, two points. Number one, the previous right away vacation or section, your right away vacation didn't involve disturbance. And, the public has a, we have a right to know how deep you're going to dig. He said, the purpose here is says to allow future disturbance within the right of way. Doesn't say anything about trespass safety or whatever. It says, allow future disturbance within the right of way. We have a right to know. The public has a right to know how deep, how 
deep you're going to dig. And as I said before, George, without the Supreme Court decision, we cannot disturb any additional property without a Pennington, Pennington County construction permit. Fair enough. And so we postpone our decision until we get that decision. Thank you. Okay. Um, there's been a motion on the floor. All in favor say aye. Aye. The aye. Substitute. No, just a second. What's the motion? This is the substitute. To, to postpone this decision until Supreme Court rules. Right. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. 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 Back to the previous motion. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Motion carries. So who voted no against the next? Just no was DeSanto and Fairby. Okay. Thank you. Next, we are needing to pull item E off the table. And that'd be the request to waiver building permit fees for Gabriel Miller. You need a motion? Yes, sir. So moved. Move. Second. Moved by LaCroix, second by Fairby to pull it off the table. And now, PJ. Yep, representatives from the Department of Equalization are here again. The request is to uh, have waived a late charge of $757 for building permit 17-0462. The question I believe is, was taxation on the structure? Yes, sir. Okay. Your name, sir? Shannon Ritberger, <laughs> Director of Equalization. What specifically is the question? My, my question, Shannon, was, and I might have the, the two mixed up, but both of these, they're asking for waiver of fees because of now item E has got a stick built home on it now or put, and was it taxed as a mobile home? Okay. Uh, it, yes, at one time. Now the taxes on a mobile home and manufactured home are exactly the same as taxes on any other property your property is assessed at market value, uh, whether it's a mobile home or stick-built home, it's still market value and the same levy is applied. All of that is exactly the same. Uh, at one time, this, this started out as a mobile home, uh, mobile or manufactured home, there, there is a difference. But anyways, there was a, a trailer house there at one time that it has been built onto and around and over. And at some point, uh, we looked at it and said, uh, trailer house is gone, this is now a house. So we call it something different in our record. Doesn't change the tax, the tax is exactly the same. Uh, but there are, some, th there are some differences that are important to the property owner. Uh, a loan is more favorable on a stick-built home than it is on a trailer house. The terms of a loan are more favorable. Uh, insurance, there's some differences in insurance, and I think that's uh, of an interest to the property owner here. And when, uh, you, when you sell a property that has uh, a trailer house on it, you have to pay the taxes in advance on the trailer house uh, when that doesn't happen when you have uh, a stick-built home. So there are some issues there that make a difference, but as far as the taxes, taxes are exactly the same. A $50,000 trailer house pays exactly the same tax as a $50,000 house. Okay, okay. I, I understand that part. So my question maybe for the second one where a mobile home was taken off and a basement was put in, is that, that must be item? It's F. 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 <coughs> item F, we're on E. So that's way different from this one. So let's do E first, because we got that off the table. Okay. Okay. So any other questions on the waiver of the permit penalty fees on Gabriel Miller? So these are just the question. For Gabriel, she's on a modular home on land, and building permits that you're talking about is the additions onto the mobile home that were built. Yeah, we we went we sat down and we figured out what building permit she would need to become into compliance and she's applied for all of those. Okay. And so the, my question was is I thought the taxes would be separate. Right. And you would have noticed that that may be on the next one I'm gonna ask, but Okay. But as far as this one it's a little bit different. So do we have a motion on this one? I would make a motion to dismiss the charges. To waive the, the permits. Waive the late okay. fees. 
DeSanto made a motion. Is there a second? Second. Second by Faraby. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. 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 Two no's and three yeah. ayes. Motion carries. Two was Commissioner uh, Buskert and Commissioner LaCroix, Ms. Kara. Next one. Next item is uh, item F, a request a waiver of penalty fees, late charges, in the amount of $593 for building permit 17-0465. Um, on this one, uh, the mobile home was removed sometime prior to 2002. Um, but the only thing we had record of really was a covered porch with the current owner actually had applied for um, some years ago and also the existing garage that had been there since 94. Okay, my question would be on this one. This is totally different from our previous one because mobile home was removed and a stick built house was built. And if I remember right, there's a basement was. Correct. Basement was installed, everything. I mean, this is quite a bit different. And this was built before this new owner. Correct. Okay. I don't know if it's any different from my perspective. Same situation. There was something there of a trailer house that's been built onto and added to and around and all that. And all of the trailer house is now gone. Okay. So it's taxes. So my this is, this is the problem that I have with waiving the penalties and so forth with this. To me, this seems more of a civil action that the home, current homeowner should go after the, the seller for doing because they did something as far as removing a, a piece of property and building a new house with no permits, no nothing. You know, to me, that's, you need to uphold the penalties and late fees and the property owner needs to go, to me personally, needs to go after that because I mean, you're taking a modular home or a mobile home, removing it, digging a hole, putting new utilities in with no permits, no nothing. Now, this current owner has no idea, there's no inspections, nothing done. You know, to me, it should be we should uphold our standings so people don't do this. There's a reason why we have the penalties and so forth is for inspections and safety. You know, I mean, so I'm not gonna be in a support of waiving the penalties and fees, I think the current property order probably needs to pay them and go after the person who sold them the home civilly. So my motion is to deny this one. Here's a substitute. Was yeah. there a motion on the floor? There no. was no motion okay. on the floor. So your motion is to deny? Yes. Is there a mm -hmm. second? Second by Buskrew, first by LaCroix. Uh, a substitute motion is to <clears throat> waive the so-called penalty fee. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion on the penalty fee? No, Madam Chair, we've been through this, I don't know how many times, the new owners, you know, what is their obligation to, to make sure every T's crossed and every die, I is dotted before they buy a home. I, uh, they have some obligation, but to this extent, how many counties in, in South Dakota have building permits, period? Well, you move here from another county, Fall River County, for example, with no building permits. The last thing in your mind would be to check for, before you buy this place and see if it has a building permit to satisfy Pennington County. I have a real problem with that, and I, I think we ought to quit punishing, we ought to quit punishing people. Thank you. I have to agree with George with the permit because a lot of times, if you have something built, you already figured when you bought that right. that it oh. it had to have a permit. So if you have a building and and it's already built, you're going to guess that. And and I don't know if I've ever checked. I guess I haven't bought, had anything in the county, but I haven't went to the planning and zoning to see if my my house has got a permit. I'm going to guess that it was permitted the minute it was built. Something else that food for thought. You know, a lot of these people are moving in from counties, that, as George pointed out. They don't have building permits. They're not familiar with that. So they may be coming here not even realizing that, that you got to get a building permit for something. And um, so I, I just, I don't feel like it's, it's right to, char to penalize. They've come forward. They've right. agreed to pay the permit fees now. Um, 
they're showing good faith, in my in my opinion, yeah. um, to cooperate with the rules that they are now aware of, and uh, and therefore I that's why I vote to waive these penalty fees. Madam Chair, I, hold, I, hold on, Commissioner Fairby. PJ. Yeah, just uh, one item of note: the current owner did know the building permits are required because they obtained one to cover the porch. However, um, so for the other side of the argument, staff should have caught this six years ago. Okay. I, I think both both the applicants have, have agreed to pay the penalty, I mean, not the penalty, but the building permit fee. Is, is that correct? <laughs> That's big of them. Oh. Well, they're well, going to pay the real fee that they owe? But it, and, oh, and, and, and most, give them a break. wait a minute. Guys. In most counties in South Dakota, you don't need a building permit. You in Pennington County. Well. Okay, guys, let's take a vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? No. Aye. Three ayes. Motion carries, two noes. Thank you. Thank you. One thing we didn't do was take it off the table. Did we do something wrong there? No, I thought we did. Just yeah, all... We did, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Okay. Let's go on to item 19, commission assistant. All right. Okay, commissioners, it's that time of the year again where we're getting ready for the fall annual South Dakota Counties Convention and you have the ability to make a nomination for the 2017 County Achievement Award. Um, if there's something that this board is interested in nominating, I would respectfully request you do it today. Um, the applications are due by August 18th, and if you wait until the next meeting on the 15th, I don't know that I can get it put together in time. So um, Pennington County won last year for the Sheriff's Office Garden Project. We've won also in the past for the Crisis Care Center. Um, so it's kind of a big deal. My, Mr. LaCroix? I think I, I, I contacted you earlier on it. Well, we, we, we done across the street with the reception center. So I think once we get that done, I think that's gonna be one that we're gonna wanna nominate. I would agree with that. I think once that county health facility gets built and gets going, that would be a good nomination. Um, the one that comes to my mind right now is Veterans Court. So we just had the recent. That's up and new, new, newly going and, and is a making good idea. a difference. That's a good idea. I'd be in support of that. Board, are we in support of that? I believe so. Okay. I would need a motion to that effect, so please. Move. So moved by LaCroix, second by DeSanto. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, motion carries. Thanks for the suggestion, Holly. Yes, sir. Item B. Yes. Um, item B is um, the request for proposal that the Board of Commissioners made to Malcolm Chapman. Um, you've got the documents in your packets for a training proposal for the art and practice of collaborative leadership. Um, it's up to the board now if you are interested in taking part in that training. Um, funding source would come either from the commission budget or if the board so chooses, you can make a motion to approve a contingency transfer um, as we do have money in the contingency fund. Uh, total cost Malcolm has proposed is $2,500 for a four hour program. Questions? Okay. Commissioner DeSanto. I was one of the ones that originally asked for this and I believe that that's a fair um, judging by the different seminars and uh, that I've been to, that's a fair price um, that Malcolm's asking and I believe that it will help us in the long run to, to uh, work better with one another. So I would make a motion that we approve that and uh, request that everyone attend. So. Okay, motion by DeSanto, second by LaCroix. All in favor say aye. I'll it. Oh, whoops, sorry. Oh. Sorry. We get whoops. a chance to say whoops. something? <laughs> yes, you do. Yes. I apologize. Well, these are, we get it. That's what we're Best here group. for. Well, you have to remind me sometimes. 
I, I'll probably vote in favor of this because I like Malcolm and probably need. I think it's a shame that we got to spend twenty five hundred dollars of taxpayers' money because we act 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 like a bunch of kids up here and don't have enough principles to uh, act decently and and conduct ourselves as we should. All right. Any other? Madam Chair, I discussion. Go ahead, sir. Oh, okay. Commissioner Lagrange. I, I think. Uh, Training is good no matter who you are. Um, and I think to update our skills, I think working with uh, Malcolm and Pam Tini Thomas could could actually help in some way or another. Now, is this limited to just the commission? Holly. That's my understanding, is all five of you need to attend to make it worthwhile. Okay. And if you want your staff in with it, Commission Office staff, I guess that's direction from the board. That that was my only other thought is Commission staff. I was thinking almost. Like any of the department heads or just us? No, I'm, I was thinking Holly and Andy both being part of it, but maybe, maybe not. I have no, I have no issue with Holly and Andy you either. attending. Uh, you know, I'm sure they would help out with that. I mean, we're, we are a team, and they are part of the team, so that, that's my thoughts. Okay. But uh, how soon do we need to, we need permission to move forward today? You know, there isn't a timeline set on this. If if the board wants to continue it till the 15th, I don't really see any reason. Well, he's got a motion for but, approval. Um, but the only thing I guess I would request is I need to know where your funding source is, if you want to pull it from the commission budget or if you want to supplement from the contingency fund. What was in your motion? Is there funds available in the commission budget? It's going to be tight, sir. It's not something that I budgeted for. Okay, then I would suggest that we pull it from the contingency, contingency fund. I mean, I can do my best to absorb it by the end of the year, um, and if it... If I can't, then I can come in and ask for the contingency fund supplement at the end of the year. Um, I guess that would be my preferred route. I think that, just that's a better idea. So pay I, for it out that of on the your second budget. Okay. okay. Commissioner Fairby. Um, how do we get around open meetings? It'll be published. Anytime three or more of you are together, it's an official meeting. But open to the public? Well, that's fine. I mean, going to have to be. We don't have a choice. Well, the odds are that nobody would show up, but if they did, I uh, if the intent of something like this is, is a close setting. I, I don't know how it could, how we could have any desired outcome without it being close setting. And Is there, a, is there a way to uh, I don't know. <laughs> do this under an executive session? No, no, state law is very strict, and you, you only qualify for two different reasons to go into executive session, and I don't believe this follows okay. any of those. I could, think we're fine. Could, could squeeze personnel, but I mean, it, it, it's... Elected officials, and, so and, you're not personnel, <laughs> Well, I don't think. Jay is laughing, but that's as close as it would come. It'd be personnel, and I, uh, I, I think we're treading on some, some shaky ground. And like I say, if it's public, uh, it's, uh, at least my opinion, desired outcome, but awful hard to achieve. Hey, uh, Jay Aldern with the state's attorney's office. I can certainly look into that and see if if there's. Uh, some way there's an exception or whatever, but I suppose you ought to plan on it being a public meeting and then uh, to the extent that it has an agenda, uh, I would agree. I, I, I can't imagine anyone coming, but if someone were to choose to come, you can make it very clear they're not participating. They're sitting somewhere in the back. Observing. Uh, you know, I mean, you, because right. you can say that, you can do that. We could even put it in the, in the notification that this is for, uh, by observance only. Right, absolutely. Okay. All right. Well, That's if I good. owned a small company with five or ten employees, I'd be sitting right back there and getting it for free. That, uh, I, 
I feel that this this goes a little further than just um, all of us getting along. I think that Malcolm's going to be able to teach us some tools to uh, come to better conclusions and and how to make better decisions. And uh, any time that we can learn how to make better decisions and and uh, base our the decisions that we do make on reason, um, good reasoning, then I think that that's a, a, a plus for us. And if the public gets some uh, benefit from it, then good. Then, <laughs> then it's not a waste of money for them either. Maybe sure the I... next time we uh, do something, that particular person in the public that got some effect might benefit us too. Yes. <laughs> Commissioner Fairby. It's, it's not that I'm opposed to the, the idea. It's We've got this problem with all the law. And, uh, thank you. Nope, we'll follow the law, George. I believe also it's a team building in a sense where we can, if you learn one thing from, from going to a meeting and it benefits for you or others for the future, it's a positive. So I've um, done that a lot and it's made a huge difference for me in my learning process. So. I agree with the other two commissioners. I guess um, before we vote, I guess I'd, I'd like to postpone it until maybe Jay can do a little research for us and see if, um, what kind of grounds we're on. You don't have a, uh, you don't have a date set for it yet, right? No. no. So, I mean, I, I can easily give you an opinion or a thought. You could approve this today, uh, and I could give you that thought before you actually, so, I mean, you need 24 hours. Yeah. So, you know, okay, that's fine. I, I would say go forward with it, and I can communicate with Holly if I see any way that it's not a public meeting, uh, that it's not a public meeting, or that it has to be. Uh, okay. I, can... I, I tend to agree. I think our biggest problem is going to be scheduling it to get all five of us here. That's my personal opinion. All righty, we have a motion on the floor. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? I abstain. Okay, with one abstention. Bill eight four, right? Yep. Okay. Motion carries. Item twenty. Request for support of appointment of Black Hills National Forest Advisory Board. Commissioner Lacroix, do we have a motion? <laughs> you guys. I guess to... a question. Go ahead. Were there any? But was there anyone else on the board that wanted to? Um, look at this appointment or become get on the advisory board for the Black Hills National Forest. Anybody else Anybody? want an appointment? I, I already applied. You applied? You I applied. applied, yes. Okay, so we got Commissioner LaCroix and Commissioner Fairby. Okay. Do we have a nomination? Oh, well, wait a minute. <laughs> All five of us could apply. Anybody can. can, yeah. can, can I, I applied for the local elected official, South Dakota slash Wyoming. That was the category. There were 16 categories. And okay. So you two applied, and we have, do you want the position, or do you want Lloyd to take it? Um, <laughs> well, obviously, I applied, so I must want it, right? Then there's two positions open, you or Mr. LaCroix. No, Is there a nomination? One, one open. One position, but one person. You or Mr. LaCroix need to have a nomination. And then we approve it. I, get, I guess I asked last meeting for the support, brought it up and so forth, that there was no mention of back then about George putting an application in. He, he did, that's why this is brought forward today is because I, two weeks ago, I asked for support. And, and any comments from the board, and nobody had said nothing. So I assumed that to move forward, we'd officially do it this way. If Mr. Farabee had mentioned this at the last meeting, that he'd put an application and, and was interested, then we could have discussed this. This wouldn't have been an issue. But uh, if you can tell me when it, he signed the the letter of application and the date and, and could give it to Holly, we could definitely 
go from there. And, you know, we just did it in the last two weeks. Okay, guys, the bottom line is, is the request for supportive appointment to Black Hills Forest Advisory Board Commissioner LaCroix. So um, we either support LaCroix or we change the mo motion. Someone want to change the motion? Or do we have a motion on this appointment? I guess, Lloyd, um, did you step up because nobody else was? Or do you feel that you have some expertise or... What do you, I, what's your thoughts? As I mentioned in the last meeting, I worked in the forest industry for 26, not forest industry, but the byproduct of the forest industry for 26 years at Marillat. We took the wood chips, sawdust, uh, made particle wood, cabinets, and so forth. Uh, the industry <coughs> that I'd been in for 26 years has relied heavily on the forest industry. So, that was one of the reasons, de deciding factors, that I decided to move forward with it. <coughs> okay. So do we have a motion? Well, I need a clarification. This is a request for supportive appointment to the Black Hills National Forest. Do, do we do the appointment? Does the National Forest Advisory Board do the appointment? Who does the appointment? Forest, forest Supervisor. <gasps> okay, so uh, oh, that's not correct. It's the United States Department of Ag, the U.S. Secretary. It's a federal appointment, and it's going to take about six months, is my understanding, to have it run through Washington and have it come back. So what what we were trying to do here is to support him. Support a an, uh, a, an application an applicant of Commissioner Lacroix to submit his application for consideration at the federal level. And George claims he's already sent one in. Without notice or support of the rest of the commissioners. Well, I guess he can do that if he wants to. I want to make a motion to support the appointment of uh, Commissioner LaCroix to the Black Hills National Forest Advisory Board and do whatever it takes, a letter or whatever it takes to do that. There's a second. Uh, question. If they approve, George's application, and they approve Lloyd's application, what do we do? My understanding is there's only one position. So they'll only approve one? That's my understanding. We're sending one Pennington, As a representative of Pennington County, yes. Well, I have no problem with competition, so I guess I'll go along with letting but, him but, submit but, one as well. But this is not just Pennington County. This is a South Dakota hey, slash I'll second Wyoming. the motion. I'll second the motion on bus groups. Okay. Let's listen. What did George? What I know, we... but we need. We had a motion on the floor. We need a second. So I second in bus groups motion. Now, George, your turn. As I understand it, there's one of the 16 positions is available for a ele local elected official from South Dakota slash Wyoming. That covers a pretty good size chunk of uh, ground and a lot of people and. And I think it also has a legislative slot. I don't know whether that's South Dakota, Wyoming. I think it's, well, it could be both. But anyway. So there could be 10, 15 applications. Well, absolutely, yeah. Plus there's oh, absolutely. alternates. And uh, it's my understanding that the force supervisor obviously makes the recommendation. Does it go all the way to D.C.? Yes. But I'm guessing that's rubber stamp. Well, that, okay. I mean. Yeah, my Both of you submitted an application. They're only choosing one of you. Let the Forest Service choose who they want. Okay, there has been a motion on the floor to support Commissioner LaCroix for this position from this commission. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? I'll abstain. Okay, so roll call. Baskerud? Yes. DeSanto? Yes. Fairby? Abstain. LaCroix? Yes. I think I need to oh. abstain too also. <laughs> Sorry about that. So motion carries. Yes. Yay. Thank you. Committee reports? None here. Sando? None here. Adcock, none. 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 All right. Approval of vouchers? Make a motion to approve the vouchers in the amount of $190,000. Second. $644.90. Motion by Buskard, second by LaCroix. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Motion approved with one no, Commissioner Ferry. Items from the public. Mr. Dial was going to speak. He didn't wait for us. All right. And we did executive session, so we're on adjournment. So moved.
Second. second. Moved by LaCroix, second by Buskerud. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Good job today, board. We'll Good be discussion.